Welcome to the lesson and this lesson we're going to look at how plate heat exchangers work. As mentioned in the previous lesson we have two inlets and two discharges and they're installed on the fixed plate. Notice the hot fluid goes in the top left side and comes out the bottom left side. The cold fluid goes in the bottom right and comes out the top right. Let me just spin it around so we can see the arrows. So hot goes in at the top and out at the bottom and cold goes in at the bottom and out at the top. The reason we feed the fluids into the heat exchanger like that is actually quite simple. As the cold fluid goes in at the bottom here, it's going to pass through the heat exchanger and become warmer. And as it does so, it becomes less dense and then it's going to come out of the top through this hole here. When it becomes less dense, it's going to have a tendency to try and rise above any of the fluid that is more dense. So that means it's going to try and rise upwards out of the heat exchanger. So if we're pumping fluid around the heat exchanger, it makes more sense to pump it in at the bottom and then that way as it gets warm it's going to pass up anyway and then out of the heat exchanger. If we did it the other way round, we'd be pumping the fluid in cold through here. It would get warmer and it would want to actually rise back up as its density decreases and we'd have to put more effort into pumping it down and out through this hole. So as a general rule, if we're putting a cold fluid into a heat exchanger and it's going to be heated up slightly, then it's going to go in at the bottom and out at the top. Reversely, if we take a hot fluid and we put it into the heat exchanger, like seen here on the upper left side, then we're going to put the fluid in at the top and out at the bottom. Because as the fluid cools, its density increases and then we can take it out of the bottom. So there's no point trying to fight the laws of physics. Because if we do that, then we're just going to waste energy. And that's something that we definitely don't want because energy usually costs money. In order to learn how the plate heat exchanger works, let's just imagine for a moment on the hot fluid side, we've got the fluid going in at 50 degrees. I'm not going to say Celsius or Fahrenheit because you can work with whatever units you're comfortable with. But it goes in at 50 and comes out at 40. Correspondingly, if we've got a 10 degree temperature drop, we're going to have roughly a 10 degree temperature gain on the cold fluid side. So if we go in at 50 and come out of 40 on the hot side, let's just imagine that on the cold side, we go in at 30 and we come out at 40. Now these are rough approximations, but we'll stick with them for now. So 10 degrees lost on the hot fluid side equals 10 degrees gained on the cold fluid side. If we're looking at thermodynamics, the example we're using is not strictly correct, but for us it's a good enough approximation. Let's have a look at what happens to the fluids when they go into the heat exchanger. We can see that on the first plate, this plate here, none of the fluid flows between the area of the plate, that is to say the start plate and the fixed frame. The reason we don't have any flow in this area is because the frame itself is a very poor heat exchanger. We don't really want to heat up the frame and try and get rid of that heat to the air. As you can see, the frame is quite thick and so it's not going to transfer the heat very well. So the start plate has gaskets that surround both of the inlets and discharge holes. You can see here it's completely surrounded and on the next one as well. And if we go up here, we can also see that the gasket is completely round here and also round there. And that means that when we press the plate against the fixed cover, so we're pressing the start plate against the fixed cover, no flow is going to be able to pass through the gaskets and onto the side of this plate here. So keep that in mind, the gaskets are sealing certain areas of each plate. For the start plate, we're sealing this entire section of the plate so that no flow is allowed between the fixed plate and the start plate, at least on this side. However, on the next side, you can see that our gasket has changed slightly. 
and it is the gasket that is controlling the flow to every single plate. So now imagine this plate is pressed up tight against the one on the left where my mouse is now. We're going to allow the fluid to come in and it's going to flow downwards and it's going to flow all the way down here, down here, down, down, down. This plate's quite long and if we get down to the bottom and I zoom out slightly you can actually see the flow is going to come down and it's going to pass to the bottom section where my mouse is now. When we get to this section the flow is going to flow to the left and it's going to be carried out of the heat exchanger. So let's go up to the top again. You can see it comes in over here. I'm trying to line this a little bit better. Comes in here, flows downwards, zoom out slightly. In there, flows downwards, 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 and then goes out on this side here. And that is all that is occurring for the hot fluid. If we have a look at some other plates, we can see the same thing happening again. If I angle this correctly, you might actually see exactly how the flow goes through the heat exchanger. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot. Every hot plate or every hot side of a plate has the same gasket. You can see here, this is a hot plate. Look at the gasket in this area. Go across, same again, same again. So we know that we're taking flow in at the top, it's coming down, it's flowing downwards, and it's coming out at the bottom left. Once we get all the way to the end, we can actually see that we've got a hot plate on this side, or well, this is the hot side of the plate. And on the opposite side, because it's an end plate, we actually have a gasket, which was the same as what we used at the start. And this prevents any flow going between the plate and the movable cover or the movable frame. Now we do this for the same reason as before. The movable frame itself is not a good heat exchanger. So we don't use it as part of the heat exchanging process. But let's now have a look at what happens to the cold fluid. We've seen that the hot fluid goes in the top left and comes out the bottom left and it passes through each of these plates. The cold fluid comes in the bottom right and it goes out of the top right. Let's pull up one of the cold plates. We'll start with this one here. The cold fluid comes in here. It flows upwards, upwards, and then reaches the top right section of the plate and is pushed outwards by the flow from all the other plates and from the pump. So the cold fluid is entering the bottom right and flowing out of the top right and the hot fluid is entering the top left and flowing out of the bottom left and we're circulating the two fluids within the heat exchanger. Because we always have this hot cold hot cold hot cold pattern throughout the heat exchanger and because the plates themselves are quite thin we're going to exchange heat from one side of the heat exchanger so here where it's blue and cold compared to the other side which is red and hot. So they're coming not into direct contact with each other but they are coming into thermal contact. The hot fluid is going to be cooled down by the cold fluid and the cold fluid is going to be heated up by the hot fluid. And that is essentially how a plate heat exchanger works. The plate heat exchanger allows us to bring two fluids into close contact with each other, not direct, they're actually indirect contact, and allows us to exchange heat. So they're in thermal contact with each other and that allows us to exchange heat between the two flow mediums without them coming into direct contact with each other. The process is incredibly efficient. The reason it's so efficient is because of the design of the plates. So let's now go and have a look at these plates in a lot more detail. If you like this video and would like to see more engineering related tutorials, 
Then check out some of the links in the video description area. And if you click on these links, you'll get a special discount price for all of our engineering video courses. If you want to support the channel, then please do like this video or share it on social media. It really does help us out. You can also leave a comment in the comments section. And if you've got any questions, then please just ask and I will try to respond to you within 48 hours. Thanks very much for your time.